All right, hello everyone, and thank you for tuning in once again to the Black Box Podcast. BBOR, Black Box Online Radio. Now, I've done a couple uploads on this channel about the presidential candidate, Andrew Yang, who is going for the Democratic nomination in 2020. And even before we get to the actual general election, the 2019 primary is going to be quite heated, and we already are seeing a lot of um, what would you call it? Enthusiasm, uh, uproarious nature from people like Kamala Harris and Cory Booker trying to uh, build up some momentum to see if they are going to be throwing their hats into the race. However, let's talk about Andrew Yang and his plan for universal basic income. Andrew Yang's plan talks about giving every adult ages 18 to 64 $1,000 a month. Universal Basic Income, UBI. Now, I want to explore one of the challenges put forth to this plan. This comes to us from a new third-party group called the Humanity Party. And they're a very, very small, very, very miniature following, but it's like they brought up one big point. They're like, if you just give people cash, they are going to go out and spend it on drugs They are like saying flat out, do not give people cash. Well, what's the alternative? The alternative is to give people a voucher system, very similar to the EBT system or food stamps. But this one, if you're going to give people this $1,000, they say, give them a voucher card so this money can only be spent on food, clothing, shelter materials, education, or medicine. And this is quite different than Andrew Yang, because what Andrew Yang is about is he wants to re-envision capitalism. He promotes new capitalism, and he wants people to use the $1,000 to start businesses. And if you're familiar with Andrew Yang at all, you know one of the big reasons, right? It's because he wants people to deal with the advancements in automation, saying that, you know, we're going to lose a lot of jobs to robotics and to technology and automated services. So if people get this $1,000, they're going to envision new ways to create businesses. And if it's going to everybody, ages 18 to 64, you're going to see a massive upswing in the um, employment in the workforce. And Andrew Yang actually predicts 4.5 million new jobs will be created from his UBI plan. On the other hand, what on earth is going to happen with this $1,000? I'm going to be very, very direct. I don't know. And this, um, this upload is not really sort of an opinion. This is just sort of a challenge where I'm just making the um, interrogative statement like, which is better for the people out there who are entertaining the possibility of UBI or just even if you think that there is you know, the smallest chance that this could actually happen at some time in the future. Do we give people cash or do we give them a voucher card? I'm just going to flat out ask the question. I do not have a perfect answer. Do we give them the cash that they can have this $1,000 either in bills, check, or bank account? Or do we give them a voucher card that can only be spent on those five things we talked about? One of the big things that it would be put forth by some people like maybe the more on the more libertarian side the sort of Milton Friedman school of thought you know like whether you want to talk about classic liberalism or a more free market approach would be something like I mean you might say that some people are going to be spending the money on drugs but no matter what system you implement there will be abuse no matter which system you choose people are going to try and misuse it No matter which system you choose, there are going to be problems. Milton Friedman said it very clearly, Nirvana is not for this world. Where are the angels? The angels aren't for this world either. So it's like, that's the one hand. That would be something arguing in favor of Andrew Yang's plan. Give people $1,000 in cash. Because it's just sort of like saying, give them their freedom. And even if they do spend it on drugs or gambling or prostitution or some other nonproductive activity, that was their choice. 
and they had their freedom, and that's what they did with it. However, the other side of this, which uh, that um, the sort of humanity party angle that we've talked about is, okay, but let's look at this from a qualitative answer. Do not turn yourself into an, an enabler. Do not enable other people's drug habits. I mean, that's just sort of the flat-out bottom line. They're just like, hey, if you don't want people to be spending this money on drugs, just give them a voucher card so they don't have to. And that is also supported by something um, from FDR. The Humanity Party is all about sort of reshaping FDR economics because they just want to say that the needy will never be free. Very famous line from FDR, the needy will never be free. And they don't want to enable anyone's destructive behavior. It's like, yeah, okay, you might think that people are always trying to abuse the system. Whatever, we don't want to be making it worse. We just want to give people the basic necessities of life. And that's very similar, actually, to the plan that was put forth by John Linder and Neil Bortz in the fair tax. The fair tax has a prebate, which is very similar to universal income. In fact, it is a form of universal basic income where it would give people the cost of necessities. It's sort of like kind of a middle ground between these two ideas. But um, I would really want to just sort of put forth that question. Which is better, to give people $1,000 cash or to give people the voucher card? And I'm very well aware of the possibility that people are going to spend the $1,000 on drugs. But with the voucher system, if we implement that, they won't be able to start new businesses. If you can only spend your money on food, clothing, shelter, materials, education, and medicine, unless they're going to be opening up a stall at the farmer's market and sell fruit or something, you won't be able to use this to help your business exactly. I mean, this is not something that could be revisioned into a variety of things, and it's like, Maybe it would alleviate some economic pressure in the household, but at the same time, it does not account for the loss of jobs that we will have because of automation and all of those uh, technological advancements that we went over. So, what do you think? Once again, this, this is really marketed toward people who are just entertaining the smallest possibility of universal basic income or something of the like. Do you think that it would be better to give people... Andrew Yang's plan, $1,000 a month to everyone ages 18 to 64, or give people a voucher card that could be spent only on certain things. We have the technology to do both. We have the possibilities and the capabilities to do both. It's just a matter of first choosing a plan and finding out how we would implement it. What do you think? What would you say? Talk to you next time.